In the last module, we discussed low-cost lighting solutions, such as the clamp lamps we discussed and I showed you. Uh, we also talked about how to do your lighting for free if you can shoot by windows and leverage daylight, right, or shoot outside. But regardless of what you use for your lighting, it's going to be mixed with a strategy of settings in your camera that are going to be used to create what we call exposure. You may have heard of this term, the exposure triangle. We want to discuss that triangle's points, ISO, shutter speed, and aperture. You're at the Indie Lot, and this is the Filmmaker's Boot Camp. <laughs> Okay, so um, here we are looking at the viewfinder of the camera I use for filming. It's a Canon T5i and uh, just a very basic camera. Uh, I bought it probably about three or four years ago for about seven or seven fifty, which uh, would be way too much today to pay for it. That camera, same camera. It's a great uh, introductory camera for those that are just starting out. If you wanted to get yourself uh, a camera. Uh, where you can have interchangeable lenses and things like that. So what we want to talk about here in this module is, well, we're, we're, we're talking about lighting and we're talking about lenses, and there's some crossover between those two subjects that is going to affect something called exposure. You may have heard the term exposure triangle. All right, it's made of, the exposure triangle is composed of three uh, three settings and you can see them right here on my viewfinder you see that number 50 to the left the 1.8 uh, next to it to its right and then over to the far right you see the ISO 200 all right these are settings that are associated with the exposure triangle the 50 on the left on my camera here is is telling me what the shutter speed is set to the shutter is inside the camera body and it opens and closes, in this case at 1 50th of a second, and it lets light in to the camera body, which then hits the sensor. The sensor is controlled by the ISO to the, to the right, that's the ISO 200. You can change your sensor's sensitivity to light by adjusting that number. The 1.8 that you see there, that is the f-stop. What was, is referred to as f-stop, it's also called the aperture. That is determined by the lens uh, of your camera. So the shutter, the shutter speed, or the shutter, the 50 in this case, and the ISO, the 200, are things that are internal to the camera and the camera body, whereas the aperture, the 1.8, is controlled by uh, and determined by the lens that you're using. And that determines, that number is used to determine how much light is allowed to penetrate into the lens. And, and depending on how you have that set, it's going to affect how your shot turns out. You know, you've seen shots that everything is really clear and in focus, uh, even behind your subject. Or you may have seen shots where the subject, the person is in focus, but everything behind it in the background is out of focus. That's going to be affected very greatly by the aperture, the 1.8 setting you see there. All right, so we'll try to talk a bit about these now. So I said that these things control the exposure triangle. Now look at this set of numbers that is in the middle there, that range from negative three to positive three. Okay, this is an exposure meter. And if I go ahead and I activate this exposure meter, you can see it created, or a line is activated and it's right under the negative two. Okay, perfect exposure is right in the middle. So we are two stops underneath perfect exposure. Okay, now there's all three of these numbers here are going to affect exposure. They're either going to lessen it or they're going to uh, increase the exposure. When you're shooting, now I'm inside and so it's darker. Also outside, if you look above the viewfinder, you can see there's light reflecting off the floor there. That is a front window that's behind our Christmas tree. And, uh, of course, the more light that comes into the room that you start with, you know, the better exposure hopefully you're going to get. But it's really overcast and snowy today, and so not a lot of light is coming in. And so these kinds of conditions are definitely going to affect the kinds of exposure that you get.
All right, so let's talk about how do we get perfect exposure. Again, I'm going to activate that exposure meter, and you can see we're two stops to the left. So how can we fix this exposure? What could we do? How do these numbers affect it? So I want to start first off by talking about ISO. Okay, right now it's set to 200. Now watch what happens when I increase this ISO. Okay, I'll, I'll go ahead and bring it up to 800. All right, now if you look at our exposure meter, that ISO, which is controlling the sensitivity of the, of the sensor that's inside the camera body, okay, it's now brightening up our image. Okay, so that's one way that you can start moving your, your exposure to be more on. But the thing that you have to be careful with ISO is the higher that number goes, the more degraded your image gets. Uh, you'll see a lot of grain, perhaps, um, color pixelation in, in an image. It's called image noise. And that happens as you increase that ISO. And it's, it's produced oftentimes when you're shooting in low light settings. I find that I have problems when I'm shooting footage that has darker colored objects in it. You can tend to see the, the noise more in the darker colors and in the shadows. All right, so ISO, is the higher you bring that, you are going to get uh, a brighter image, but you're going to uh, increase too. Uh, the amount of, of, of pixelation and image noise. And so the rule of thumb there is you want to try to keep your ISO as low as possible. Now when I'm shooting outside in the light during the day, usually I can bring my ISO down to 100 and I'm in, you know, using a combination of the f-stop or aperture and the shutter speed, I'm going to get a decent exposure. All right, but indoors, it starts to get a little more tricky. Uh, your ability to shoot indoors and get great image quality is going to be determined by the quality of your camera as well as the lenses that you're using. There are some things you can do in post to fix uh, noisy images. You want to do the least amount in post as you can to have to fix stuff. You'd rather just get it as close to right, if not right, uh, in the camera when you're shooting. Aperture has to do with the lens that you're using. How low of an aperture you can get determines how much more light you can bring into your lens. So the smaller the number, you can see there uh, um, on my camera, it's at 1.8 right now, and that is the lowest I can get with this lens. There are lenses that go lower. I have another lens, a kit lens that came with this camera. It's a zoom lens, and it's a it's an 18 millimeter to 55 millimeter lens, and at 18 millimeters, the lowest I can go on the aperture setting there is 3.5. So different lenses are going to have different abilities to let in more or let in less light. Okay, so that's determined by aperture. Now inside your lens are a set of fins. And when I think of f-stop, I, I, I kind of... Now, this may not technically be correct, but I kind of think of the F as the fin or a fin stop, right? So there are a set of fins that are in your, in your lens that expand and collapse. And when they expand, they create a window, so to speak, that's smaller that lets in less light. And that would be registered in your, your aperture setting as a higher aperture number, okay? And then the the lower that number goes means the smaller the fin stop or the larger the aperture, the larger the hole that lets light penetrate in through the lens, okay? At 1.8, this is the, this, uh, well, let's just look at it this way. Let me reactivate the, the exposure meter. Watch what happens when I bring this number higher. Okay, so what it's doing, okay, and if I show my exposure meter there, you can see that it's getting less. Okay, now we can't really see, it. well, I guess it moved off, but you can see as I increase the size of the fins that are inside of that lens, it's letting in less and less light and therefore, you know, darkening the image. Okay, now if I go the opposite direction, all right, I am decreasing the fin size inside of the lens. Okay, therefore creating a bigger hole that lets in light through the lens. I can't go any lower than 1.8 because that's all that this, this particular lens supports. That gives you an idea of what aperture does. Now you'll, if you're shooting and you've got multiple lenses, sometimes, you know, based upon your environment and your settings and your lighting and all that stuff, 
um, you may be relegated to using one lens over another simply because you're trying to get better exposure and one lens won't support the exposure that you need. So some of these technical factors will sometimes be a determining factor in what lenses that you use. Um, so now let's talk about the shutter speed, an object that opens and closes. Think of it kind of like a barn door, all right? If the door is closed, the barn is dark. You open the door, it lets light in, okay? And now the barn is lit up with the light from outside, all right? So think of the shutter as opening and closing every second, okay? Or, or a number of times per second. In this case, every 1 50th second, okay, the shutter or the barn door inside this camera body is opening and closing. So you can see now I am decreasing the shutter speed. Now that number is going up for shutter, but that's just because the, I'm increasing the intervals between barn door opening, right? So the least amount of barn door openings produces a darker image, as you can see here. You can see now how all three of these numbers affect your ability to get proper exposure. So there you go. Three points of the exposure triangle, ISO, shutter speed, aperture. In our next module, we'll discuss putting all three of those together and working with your existing light in order to create better or proper exposure in our shot. If you've been enjoying this series so far but you haven't subscribed, please would you hit that subscribe button below. Also like this video and if you know anyone who would benefit from these modules, please feel free to share with them. Uh, I thank you so much again for being here and uh, I will talk to you in the next module.